Uh, Niz Inks asks, how do you create your designs and what's the thought process like? So this is a good question because actually what we're working on right now is a design course, an online course, and I'm going to have a, a ton of modules that are fully explaining from beginning to end my thought process on how to design. And um, that includes the every single principle that I think about while I design, plus examples of me designing from beginning to end. And then we might even throw a couple um, guest designs in there, like have Jessa do a couple designs from beginning to end, uh, maybe another artist or something like that. But it's really going to be a comprehensive course on everything that I know about designing. And it's really going to have a lot of information in it. This isn't like a quick wham, bam course. This is like one of those things like you buy it once and you'll never need another design course again. So I can give you some things here and there. Um, some little tips and stuff, but to be honest, I would look out for this course that's going to be out soon. It's going to be a really big deal for me because I've never put out something with this much information in it, and it's really uh, everything I know. So I would keep it a lookout for that for sure. Uh, Heart Casket Official asks, "How did you get into using negative space and such high contrast in your pieces? I like that your work has such heavy black and open skin." will stand the test of time. Yeah, bro, you hit it on the head. Um, I think beginning when I was starting to do black and gray, it was really hard for me to get solid heels that I felt like really were aesthetic because before when you first start, you're kind of magging everything, you're scared to use black, and then a lot of the grays kind of wash out to be the same tone, right? Especially if you're doing faces in the background and the face tone, it's all the same tone. I was like, man, like, what needs to happen for this to really stand out and punch even after it heals? And I think um, I've had a couple mentors along the way that gave me some good tips and I took that, but then I took that and ran with it, right? Really utilizing solid black shapes, not just shaded black areas, but solid black shapes, like where you outline it and fill it in black, because that's the most bold that you can get, right? Is a solid black, you know, whatever the shape is. Um, anything I could do where I could outline it and fill it in black completely solid, I'll, I'll do it. And then also leaving wide open um, skin because those two things are really the bones, the skeleton of your piece um, that really holds it together. If everything else fell out, you would at least have some sort of visibility because of your black and your negative space. And then you use the grays to start shaping stuff. So instead of a hard edge, now this is a curved edge because you use the medium tone. But you're always keeping in your head that you need the negative and the dark darks and always keeping in mind how it's going to heal. Because at the end of the day, the healed version of your tattoo is the real tattoo, not the picture of the fresh tattoo. So as long as you're constantly using your healed work as your point of reference for what you need to darken or lighten or leave more open skin, then you should be in good shape. But don't take your pictures and that you take for Instagram of your fresh tattoos as your end result, because it's really not, to be honest with you. Study your healed work and really push the limit on that high contrast. Uh, tattoos by Drew asks, do you design on Procreate? Yes, I design on Procreate. Um, I, I really don't need anything else. Procreate really does it all, to be honest. I'm sure people use other shit, but you know, Procreate's where it's at. Nice plants. Thank you, bro. I actually got a lot more plants behind me. You just can't see it because of this thin frame. Um, but we got a bunch of cool shit back here. Jessa helped uh, pick them out. She's the plant lady for sure. We got like a Monstera back here. We got a, we got, we got a bunch of cool shit back here. But you guys will see when I start making content for YouTube over here because the shot is really cool. We got a lot of cool shit around here. I just like the vibes. You know, I like the energy that the uh, plants give. And it's, it just adds a lot of oxygen, and it's really cool. I, like, I love plants, you know? How did you get into doing more with less with your high contrast style? Um, so a lot of designing in this style that we have now, it, it, it is about simplifying, but not in the way that most people think. So some people think that simplifying is just kind of like um, dumbing down the details. And I guess in a sense it is, but... What you're really doing is you're trying to find what the actual skeleton of the references are. Like, what is what makes this reference pop and then leave the rest out at first, right? So you're trying to find, like, the dark darks 
and where the skin breaks are and then really clean up the edges so it's understandable as a tattoo. One thing I would add is a lot of that comes down to when I'm stenciling the tattoo. I know a lot of people like using the tattoo stencil app or whatever app is out there to make those or like ghost line or whatever to make those crazy stencils automatic so you don't have to do it by hand. But I would say that my style, it specifically, this, the way you stencil it has a lot to do with how the tattoo comes out. Because while you're stenciling it, you're basically redrawing the tattoo. Like in areas where it would sometimes be convoluted or, or it's hard to understand what you would do, I would use, I would draw over and, and simplify the shapes. I'm like, okay, I see what's going on here, but I'm gonna redraw it in a way that makes sense, like boom, boom. All right, simplify that shape. That looks way better. It looks more graphic. It looks more um, intentional. And, and let me, these details, I don't need to stencil all these details. Let me stencil these main ones. And I'll leave these ones out because I could add those later because I'm an artist. I don't need to stencil everything. I could, I could add textures. I could add cracks. I could, I could add certain shades. And I don't need to have it in the, in the stencil. I think the stencil being a simplified, redrawn version of your references is what really helps you decide what edges are going to be negative, what edges are going to be positive, where the black goes, where the open skin goes. And then the rest in between, I kind of go about it as I go and I, I know how I'm going to do it. But it helps me really simplify the whole piece into something that's manageable. And I can t do a step-by-step -step process in my head a lot easier than if I had this crazy, messy stencil and I don't fucking know if this weird fucking shape that it made is is exactly what it is because it's kind of the reference was already kind of messed up. So I kind of like putting my own twist on the references by redrawing them with the stencil. So I highly suggest that because it helps me simplify everything. And then I could add the detail after I get the bare bones of the tattoo in there solid. So that's my answer to that. <laughs> Let's see, tips on packing black and getting better saturation for better healed work. Um, yeah, bro, I think packing black, you know, this also comes down to what machine you're using, what stroke it is, and how fast your hand speed is. But a general reference for packing black is the angle at which the needle is entering the skin, right? And then having an even depth. A lot of this is getting to the right depth for it to saturate and then keeping it there as you're making your circles or your movements, right? And trying to make it more of a methodical and even movement as opposed to a sporadic and kind of all over the place. Because what you don't realize when you're moving hella fast with your hand is like that needle is going in at different angles and depths as you're moving it and it gets deeper here and then shallow here and then of course, it's not going to heal solid if your needle's all over the place. I think if you can get used to uh, hanging your needle out a little bit more, getting it in there, and then feeling when the saturation is happening by getting the feedback from the feeling in your hand and the needle and the vibration, once you feel it there, you keep it there. You try to boop, keep it there, and then you make your movements. Super smooth, super methodical, and get the skin really stretched and then make sure it's saturating as you go. And then when you wipe, it should be solid black. If it's not, you need to adjust something. And then you go back in. Don't try to re-hit black like 10 times just to get it solid. If it's not going in first try, or maybe, maybe second try, then something's wrong. Something's off. Because you should be able to slow down and make sure that black gets hit first try. So that's what I would say. Even depth, hang your knee out a little, a little bit. And then try different machines and different hand motions uh, as long as you're using like a very even and methodical approach instead of a sporadic, crazy um, technique. So, yeah. 828 Inc. asks, what's the best white wash to buy? The only white wash I know on the market that is worth buying is the Empire's white wash, which I have used before. It's really fun to use. I've seen people make their own, but I also... Don't suggest that too much unless you know exactly what you're doing because adding white to gray washes isn't as simple as adding three drops to each wash. It's a different amount that you would add to each wash based on the dilution. So it's a little more complicated than you might think. But buying the, um, the Empire uh, white wash set, is, it's a good investment, I would say. I, I, I see nothing wrong with it. So if you like the white wash look or you like the utility of using white wash, definitely use uh, Empire.
said, I saw you at Ross on Arden. I was going to say what's up, but I didn't want to bug you, my G. Ross on Arden, that must have been a while ago because I haven't been to Ross in a while. But if you see me out in public and doesn't matter what I'm doing, you can say what's up. Like, I'm not fucking, you're not going to say hi to me and I'm going to be like, oh, hey, bro, I'm, I'm busy. Can you leave me alone? Like, if you see me, say what's up. Because it's also weird when I see someone trying to look at me from afar and I don't know why they're looking at me, but they're just scared to say what's up. So it gets a little weird. But I would say if you see me in person, say what's up. I promise you anytime, anywhere, I'll be OK with it. And I enjoy the interaction because when I go out, I'd rather talk to people than not talk to people, to be honest. I like connecting with people. So don't be scared next time. Hey, I was just watching Peaks and Valleys vlogs right now. Hey, I appreciate it, man. Hopefully you're leaving some comments and likes and subscribing and stuff because that shop page needs uh, some more engagement. If you guys didn't know, Peaks and Valleys, the shop, uh, my shop has its own YouTube channel where we do vlogs each week. So we follow a different artist or we follow a couple artists or we follow everyone that's there on those days and we try to capture the day and just like what we be joking about, what we be tattooing and just so you guys can get the vibe of what it's like in the shop. And for clients, it's cool. They get to see what it's like before they come in. And for artists, it's cool because they get to see the vibe of how we interact as artists. I'd say we're a little different from other shops. We are very open with uh, our knowledge and talking about what to do, asking each other's opinion. And we do that every single day. So it's a little different. And I think a lot of people get some inspiration out of it. So go over to Peaks and Valleys Tattoo on YouTube and subscribe to that channel. And if you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, at iShine Inc., uh, where I'm doing my own vlogs at the shop about the pieces that I do and I'm explaining like the whole process So if you like to get information in depth in detail You got to head over to at I shine Inc on YouTube and subscribe and uh, drop a comment in every video Every drop a comment in the last three videos if you were on this live stream and then you went to the YouTube channel Just so I know it was you. How about that? Let's see if anyone actually does that. I don't really know if I got that much pull with you guys right now, but let's see if anybody does that. Um, Veer, you know what's weird? It's like the comments on this side, it, it just stopped. So now I have to read them off the actual comment. Like it hit like 50 over here and then it stopped updating, which is kind of weird. What would someone have to have for you to want to do an apprenticeship with them? Uh, look, man, apprenticeships are a very personal thing. It's not like a small thing for me and for the person. Most likely they would be moving out here and then they would be taking, it, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of effort. And I'm not saying that a lot of you aren't down for that. It's just a personal thing to me on whether I take on an apprentice. Like it's such a feeling thing and such a, and I don't even really take on apprentices. I take on artists that are already doing something with their tattooing, and then I help them get to the next level. I think that that's where my skills lie. I, I like bringing someone from a certain level and then helping them get to a new level. If you're starting from nothing, it's a little tough because it's like a lot of grinding of just getting reps in of even fake skins and drawing. And that's a lot of footwork that you could put in yourself to prove that you're ready for uh, this type of mentorship. And, and plus, I already got my hands full. I got a couple guys that I'm talking to where they're coming in, and I'm going to give them a lot of attention to help them get to the next level. So to be honest, I'm not looking for any apprentices right now, but I'm definitely always dropping content that you could get a lot out of on YouTube and Instagram. And then we're also dropping courses for you to get better faster. And I do think that through the courses and some of the exclusive content that we're going to build, I think someone that already knows how to tattoo on a certain level could up their game, to, you know, a hundredfold without even having to be with me in person because I'm really putting that much effort into these. So I've helped people. You know, we have a guy, Tyrese, at the shop. You guys probably know him, Reezy Tats. He started with us from zero tattooing. Luckily, he had help of multiple artists in the shop to help them get from that point to where he is now. But it took a long time, guys. And the reason why we took him on in that way is because he was just fit in so well and he just kept showing up to the shop and he really became a part of the team without us even 
officially making it that. So he really earned it. He really did his shit, right? And now he's actually tattooing. He's a full-fledged tattoo artist, and he's doing dope-ass work. So um, his life completely changed over those years. But let me tell you, it's still hard. Like, getting to the next level is still hard. It takes a lot of effort. So, yeah, that's, that's just where my, my skills lie, I think. Um, I would be interested in the courses I'm in Lincoln. I'm definitely, you know, I'll probably, I did this before, but I'm probably going to do another waiting list before we drop it to make sure that everyone that's actually interested and not just people just talking about it can get on that waiting list. And if you're on the waiting list, I'm going to give you a discount when it drops. Because honestly, I really feel like I want the people that really want it and really want to get better to get it. And I'm sure random people will get it and stuff. But like, this needs to go to the people that really want it. And if you want it, you would join the waiting list if I drop it, okay? So I would say keep an eye out for that. And it would help me get a gauge of who's really about it, you know? Because we're going to start building a community of people that are really about it. And I'm going to give a lot of game to those people. And now that I have this set up at the house, it's really going to allow me to um, do more of that consistently instead of me just trying to like, oh, maybe I should go to the shop and film something. Or maybe I should do... No, I'll just, I'll sit down and I'll start giving you guys what you need. And I think building that community is going to really help a lot of you get better. And then we could also talk amongst ourselves um, about how all of us could get better in tattooing and in life and all of that stuff. So I think it's going to be really fun. Uh, how much is the course going to cost, bro? Uh, I'm thinking the course is going to be around $2,000, which is extremely cheap. It's, it's cheaper than... Um, how much I would charge for one day session of tattooing, but I'm giving you years and years worth of game. I'm giving you over 12 years worth of game specifically dialed in into this uh, very well put, well laid out uh, bits of information about this style of black and gray. And it help you guys get a lot better, a lot faster. And like I said, anybody that joins the waiting list that I'll drop can get a discount and I'm going to be giving discounts out over the first couple months that it's out. Just so I can make sure that the people that really want it get it. And I'm going to make sure you guys get it. I mean, honestly, the fact that you just asked the question is what made me think about redoing the waiting list. So I'm going to get on that soon. Um, so it just popped into my head, really, to be honest. But I'll make it obvious when I drop it. I'll put it on my story. I'll probably make a post about it. And if you see it, just don't hesitate to click it. I'll probably make it a very easy one-click thing. Add some information in and then you're done. But um, I definitely highly suggest you join it. But thanks, thanks for reminding me, you know, because I probably wouldn't have remembered to have done that. Maybe, maybe I would have, whatever. But I'm going to drop it here soon. And then once I do, just join it. And I'll make sure you guys get all the updates and the information and also give you guys a discount when it drops. Uh, Ink by Kid asked, what was the first shop you worked at and how was your experience? The uh, first shop I worked at. So I did my apprenticeship in a shop in Reno, Nevada called Endless Ink, right? Ran by a dude who, um, you know, he knew how to run a shop for sure. But there was a lot of apprentices there. I wasn't the only one. There was probably like four, I don't know, three or four apprentices there. And it was a real traditional apprenticeship. I didn't tattoo. All I did was scrub tubes. I set people up, broke people down, booked appointments, uh, collected deposits, shook inks, uh, shaved clients cleaned them down, uh, wrapped them up, um, you know, just basically learning what it's like to work in a shop with that level of hygiene and care without the tattooing part. You know, I learned some tattooing stuff there, but it's really hard to absorb it when you're not actually there to apply it. And then I was drawing a lot, I was painting a lot, I was stenciling a lot, all of these things, right? So it was really traditional. I, wouldn't, I would say that I didn't really get into the tattooing part until I actually got into a shop after that. Um, so I, my apprenticeship ended. It was a little over a year. And then I moved back to Sacramento. And then for a time being, I was tattooing out of my house because I didn't have anywhere to tattoo. But at this point, I knew a lot about hygiene and how to set up. And how, I, I knew a lot, right? And I just really wanted to start getting reps in. So I just started to... Um, tattoo where I could, who I could. I tattooed my girlfriend at the time. I tattooed some friends. <clears throat> and then I finally got the opportunity by reaching out at a local shop in Sacramento called Polka Dots. I know it's a crazy name, but it's also a piercing shop. So Polka Dots makes more sense. Tattooing and piercing, you kind of polka dot, right? Um, 
And there I met some of my people that I've been fucking with for years and years. I met Devon. If you guys know Devon, he's he was working at my shop at Peaks and the shop before that. Um, but he works in Oakland now. But he, me and him met when I started working there at my first real shop. And we've been rocking ever since. We've been in, like close friends. Um, and we both took in our careers to new levels since then. Like we both grown so much. And then the owner of that shop, Giggs, uh, was a really good friend of mine. And, you know, it was a really good shop to start at. We were all young. We were all trying to get it. We were all trying to figure out, you know, where we're going in life and how to get better. And we want to be better. We want to do better. And we kind of figured all that out together. And then, yeah, we had our individual journeys after that. But I think that it was a great shop to start at. Carl Eric Tattoo said, yo, I got a real good question. I'm 13 years in the industry yet failed at life. Never bring the drama to work, right? I was only part-time other than first year after my four-year apprenticeship. Am I tripping or... Okay, I was waiting for the question, bro. I was like, where's the question at? New apprenticeship or new shop? You've been tattooing long enough that you don't need to be an apprentice, but you need to get around artists that are going to share knowledge or at least people get around people that are better than you that you like the way they do stuff so you can pick up some new habits and new ways of thinking about approaching your tattoos and really your environment and who you're around is everything that's why i built the shop the way i did the artists in the shop make the shop it's like i don't make the shop one person doesn't make the shop the fact that we're all there sharing our knowledge with each other is the reason why we are the way we are and the way that they grow the way they grow Um, That's everything. So if you feel like you're plateaued and you need to relearn some stuff or break bad habits or something like that, you need to go to a shop where people are open to sharing and then you need to be open to change, like really changing what you know about tattooing so that you can kind of shift your perspective on all of it. Because um, if it's not working for you now, you need to change a lot of your fundamentals. And I think that would be good for you. I think I think it'd be good for you to do that. Uh, Blue Tiger Tattoos asks, are you still doing the design course? I was just talking about that. You probably just joined the live, but I was just talking about that in length. And yes, I'm doing the design course. Uh, it's 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 going to be, uh, you know, a lot in there. I was telling them it's probably going to be around $2,000. I'm going to do a, a wait list. And if you join the wait list, you'll get a discount. But it's really, honestly, it's so much, so much game in there for that amount of money. And honestly, it's like giving it away so cheap, but I'm really making sure that the value is there. And I want you, the people that really want to that type of game to get it. Um, I'm sure random people will buy it and stuff like that, but I really want the people that are gonna make the change and I can get some real testimonials out of it to really get it. So once I drop the wait list, which will be soon, you need to join it so you can get a discount. Uh, sounds like an apprenticeship. No, it's not an apprenticeship. Because an apprenticeship is different. I would say that my interpretation of an apprenticeship is more so like someone who is very beginning and they are learning even just like the hygiene part, the cross-contamination, how to set up, how to clean your shit, and then kind of how to tattoo the fundamentals and then all this stuff. The other thing is more of a collective. It's like getting around artists that are willing to share. Because if that was considered an apprenticeship, I would, you know, then that means everyone in my shop would be an apprentice. I would be an apprentice. Because everyone in the shop shares their knowledge and they teach each other shit every single day. Like, hey, how would you approach this? Or, hey, what do you think of this size? Do you think I should make it bigger or smaller? Or, hey, what do you think of this design? Do you think it's... Uh, Do you think it's too much in one area? Should I simplify it a little bit? Should I let some areas breathe? Uh, We ask each other questions all the time. So that doesn't make me an apprentice. You just got to get around good artists. It's probably going to be the most information on this subject, designing in this style that has ever been put out. Like, And I really try to make it easy to understand. And I think that anybody can grasp it. Because I've taken a bunch of artists in person, as you guys seen with the shop, where they know how to tattoo a little bit, but then you give them this type of game and it starts to click. You know, you hear something and you're like, that makes sense. And then you hear this other thing and you're like, no, that makes sense. And you start to, it all starts to come together and it starts to really click in your head. And once it clicks, once you get that click, 
It's all about reps. And then once you get the reps in with making these type of pieces, that's when you start to see the big change. You start to see designing tattoos so differently. And once you get to that point, it'll be like, how did I not know all of this before? That's what they all say. They're like, now that I know it, I don't know how I didn't know how to do it before because it makes so much sense. So I think for you and your artists, I can't wait for you guys to absorb some of this stuff because I know you're going to get a lot out of it. And I can't wait to hear your testimonial um, after you uh, absorb all of it, you know. Uh, what's a good app to find photo references? Honestly, any of the apps I use, you know, Pinterest a lot, but also trying to get better at using the AI apps like Wonder and Midjourney. Um, because there is a skill in using the AI apps to your advantage and really creating new references that people aren't using, which I think is what's dope about what AI has helped realism artists do is really get creative with the type of references you might see in your head, but you can't find. And you can try to draw it, but that's like a whole different like pathway, right? You could really get some good references to go off and build off of. Um, if you know how to use AI correctly, I might even drop a, a small course on just how to use the AI more effectively than a lot of people are using it. But even me, I'm still learning it a bit. So um, give me some time and I'm really going to absorb that. And then I'll give you guys a lot of game on that AI stuff because I think that's a great place for people to start to get a little creative, you know. Uh, Pac-Man asks, where's the best place to get tattoo removal so I can come get us half sleeve from you? Um, I would use someone credible, right? I would use, you know, like the removery is like a very credible source. However, some of these commercialized tattoo removal spots kind of elongate the process a little bit. Like something that might be able to get done in six sessions, they're having you do 12. But there's a, there's a good reason for it. It's like a liability reason. You can crank the machine up and try to get that shit out of there. But different people's skin reacts differently and they could do more harm than good if they do that. So they try to play on the safe side and just do little by little over a long period of time. It costs more money and it takes a lot more time, but it's a safer way. They know what they're doing. They're super licensed. They're super credible. So I'll go to someone credible. And yes, you can come to me for the half sleeve if you get that lightened up enough for us to go over it or if you get it gone all the way. And if you just can't wait to get tattooed by me, we could do a piece on a different part of your body. And I'm totally down for that, too. I want to get something done from you, but I want to take some time to get an idea. But yeah, soon, I hope. Listen, if you just have a general idea or just kind of something, I got you. I'll help you find out what to get. We'll, we'll create something dope. We'll tell a story. We'll create something that looks really good, but maybe has some meaning to it. Whatever you would like. I'm here for you. That's what I do. That's what I specialize in. I'm not just a uh, pick it and stick it tattoo artist. You're not just going to come to me with exactly what you want and then I just do it. This is what I specialize in. So if you want to come get tattooed, but the only thing stopping you is the idea don't let it stop you. Book the appointment. We'll have some conversation leading up to the appointment and we'll figure it out. Trust me. I got you. Uh, do you do you still use the Packer or only the critical machine? Um, I use both. I set up both. But I'm going to be honest. I've been using the critical machine a lot. The 3.5 stroke hits a little softer than the Packer. It's fucking nice, dude. I'm not going to lie. I like it. Because it does less damage to the skin. It takes a little bit of a different technique from the Packer. Because the Packer hits really hard. But um, if I need the Packer for some areas on the skin. I could just switch to the Packer. Because I have it set up. No big deal, right? Uh, but I love both of those machines. I, I think both of them are really valid. And I'm glad I tried the Critical. Because it really changed up how I approach certain tattoos. Uh, do you use Standard Max for shading? I use fucking uh, Curve Max always. For black and gray, you want to use Curve Max for sure. Definitely. All Curve Max. <clears throat> it just has like a softer ending. Like with the harsh edge on the on the not Curve Max or the, the standard Max, whatever you call them, it's, it's too harsh of a corner. And you can still use the corner on the Curve Max. You just got to get the technique down. That's all. What should I do to stand out from the other tattoo artists? Uh, definitely is going to be your designing and this is why I think designing is so important because a lot of black and gray artists, a lot of people can apply black and gray. They can do smooth shading. They can do solid black. They know how to do it, all right? You can give them a reference. They could probably fucking apply it better than, 
you know, they can apply it really well. You can learn how to apply a tattoo. What's going to set you apart is how you figure out the most aesthetic choices for your clients for any idea they have. And that's really what it comes down to is your experience adding up into every tattoo you get pitched or every idea you get pitched, you got it. I know exactly how I'm going to lay this out. I know the best choices to make it the most aesthetic. And I'm going to use some sort of feng shui in this project to make sure that it looks the best it can and it's going to stand out from everybody else. Sometimes what I do is I'll get an idea and I'll Google how other people have done it just so I know how not to do it. Even if there's this dope, I want to do it differently. So I think the designing is super important and I see a lot of people cop out and try to do little basic stuff, which looks cool and some clients are easily impressed. But for if you want to push the limit, it's going to take you to set the standard, not the client. Because the client, a lot of clients are easily impressed. If you want to really stand out, you're going to have to get down like how you approach things and how you see things and how your vision uh, combined with their idea creates something that's unique. And that's why this design course is going to be big because uh, I'm going to teach you how to do that in, in entirety. Uh, Ink by Kid said, is there a formula for your style, like a third silhouette, a third negative, a third gray, etc.? cetera? Um, I know the third rule from art, right? It, it, it is a relevant thing, you know, the third, third, and a third. I don't think that in my head when I'm designing. That's not necessarily the exact way I approach it. At this point, it's kind of muscle memory or I have an eye for it. So, um, when I see it, I could tell something's off. I could tell, oh, it needs more black or um, it, it needs more room to breathe. It needs more negative. And I could just kind of tell by looking at it. But that comes with a lot of experience for being like, damn, like you're just developing your eye, right? And that, that comes with reps, but reps doing it the right way. So once you guys learn how to get the designing done the right way, you start to develop an eye for it and see like, okay, I love this design, but something's off. Like something's a little, there's too much dead space here, or this is too dark, or this needs to stand out from the thing that's sitting next to it because they kind of look like the same tone. And all of that is, um, I can go into detail about how to explain that, but that's all going to be in the, uh, in the course. Uh, Mr. Fuerte, um, I see you commenting a lot, and I appreciate the support, and I've seen you for a while now, so I appreciate the support. He said, when it comes to darker skin tones, what's the technique used to be sure the design sits, heals, and stands out well? This is a great question. And I, what I would say is that the, the style of black and gray that I do is ideal for darker skin tones because already what we're doing is simplifying the references down to its solid blacks, its negative space, and then whatever little gray you need to shape the piece. And when it comes to darker skin tones, you need to limit your value range a lot smaller. Like if you had five grays before, you need to limit it to three because what happens is when you use some of the lighter grays on darker skin tone, when it heals, it looks kind of muddy because it's just mixing with the skin tone and creating this ugly tone that doesn't do anything for the piece. If anything, it just tones it down. So if you really want to make it pop, all you're trying to do is add contrast to their original skin tone to make it look like it's lighter than it actually is. And what, how you do that is by using heavy solid blacks and a little bit of medium gray to fade out to shape the piece because it's realistic. You need some shape to it and then leaving the rest open skin. And there's so simple of strategies on how to make something look just as realistic or pop a lot, um, but just simplifying the piece a little more. And you can still get detail. I'm not saying you can't get detail. I'm just saying that you're trying to just hone in on the contrast without using too many light or light medium grays. Uh, because it, it's going to look muddy. So if you wanted to stand out, I'd say graphic is possible. I use a lot of um, graphic elements in the designs, not only on darker skin, but on anybody's skin because it contrasts the, the realism really well. But then the realism, you want to get it as graphic as possible. Anywhere you can use solid black shapes and then have some wide open skin and just a little bit of gray to help shape it, you're going to be money. And a lot of that's going to come from experience. But to me, it's actually easier to tattoo darker skin. You just got to know where to put stuff and where to leave it out. So um, I have a lot of experience with darker skin and I know it intimidates some people that don't. But honestly, it's easier. It's just you got to know when to hold back, really.
tattooing changed my life completely. Like you guys have no idea how much it's completely shifted the trajectory of my life. And I want to do that for other people. I want other people to feel that. There's people that get into tattooing and they have the opportunity to change their life, but they don't have the right proper guidance to really hone in on it, to make it a career that really helps feed their family. And not only that, give them a, um, a vehicle of expression for their life. Because tattooing is such a good career to have because it's a creative job. You meet new people, you connect with new people, but it's also an expression. So you also get to combine your work getting paid with you being creative and expressing your ideas, which is very rare if you think about it. So us as tattoo artists are very spoiled in that way. And that's why I'm so uh, passionate about helping people get better because I know that some people are just a couple pieces of advice away from really just changing everything. And I love seeing that change in people and I've seen it happen many times. And I, I just love being that person because I never had that person straight up to help me. I had to take the long route. And so I do what I can for other people, really. That's why I do it. Uh, what needles are you into right now, Tattooed Beauty asked. Uh, I, I use Quadrant only. Quadrant is a sponsor of mine. Uh, I'm part of the Wolf Pack. Quadrant needles are really dope. I really like how their actual casings uh, fit the needle very snug and tight and then it has like a thin profile so that it feels like if you need to get precise with some precision precision you can really hone in on the precision and and know that the needle's not going to move around in the tube much and it has really good ink flow i find with like the cheyenne cartridges although they are like super premium the cartridge casing itself is super thick and sometimes it, it just kind of gets in the way of me like keeping my eye on the needle and trying to hone in on some on some real precision. And sometimes the quadrant needle for me is superior in that way because I feel like I can really get precise with it, you know. Uh, I wouldn't use tattoo ink after it expires. I think I would not hold on to ink that long and I would only use the top quality stuff that you're going to inject into someone's skin. Uh, I would definitely... I would definitely not I would definitely splurge on whatever equipment you need to make it all good. I I I try to go all out on all the shit. I try to make sure nothing is weird, expired. No, 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 no. Get the best equipment that you can. It's so readily available nowadays. And then start your tattoo journey. Don't try to cut any corners because there's no excuses nowadays. Everything's there for you to use, buy. You don't Back in the day, you couldn't buy a machine. You couldn't do anything unless you had a license and someone would call your phone and make sure you're actually in a shop and you can't. Dude, it's crazy how available shit is now. Uh, let's see. Did you do Jess's ta chest tattoo? Yeah, I did Jess's ta chest tattoo. I did all of her other shit too, except for a couple things. But I've tattooed her so much and I'm going to tattoo her even more. She tattooed me a little bit too, but I need some more pee. I need some more work from her, to be honest with you. But to be honest, I don't even like getting tattooed. That's the crazy part about it. Don't, don't come at me. Don't come at me. I don't like getting tattooed that much, but you know, I'm still going to get tatted though. Yeah, literally this era of tattooing is the best time to start. There's so many young people getting into tattooing and there's so much information out there now that they could just Bro, they could just learn how to tattoo realism in fucking a year. It's insane. It's like, it took me so long to get enough info or the, the right guidance to even do the type of tattooing I want. And now people are just hopping on and doing micro tattoos for $500 to $1,000 and just killing shit. It's insane. But, you know, there was also a generation before me that had it harder than me. So I just kind of start to feel that now because I've been in the game over 12 years and bro it's crazy to see all the young people get better so fast but i also would rather i instead of hating on that i would rather be a part of the reason they get better so I, that's why i'm an open book and i try to just help whoever i can really tattooing seems like a solo sport but honestly bro there's so much community in it that if you want to you could reach out and be a part of something so much bigger than you and I think that it's just such a blessing that we could do that as artists. So I think guest spots are great. 
And yes, we should have you back for way more, bro. Honestly, uh, you're cool as fuck. I think you should come for fucking a week or more. We would love to have you. And this time we'll try to book you uh, more ahead of time. I, I understand that like last minute type shit and we could have did more in the promotion and then tried to help you a little bit more. But uh, anytime, bro, you want to come back, you could just come right back if you want to. I'm so down to have you. Yeah, people who gatekeep, you know, I get it. But the gatekeeping comes from some sort of bitterness where they want people to feel how hard it was for them. So they try to make it harder on you because it was hard for them. But I don't think you're going to be able to to stop the fact that as information becomes more commoditized and it's more accessible, it's going to happen regardless whether you gatekeep or not. So you might as well be part of the solution instead of the problem. And I'd rather be a part of the solution, really. I'd rather just double down on like helping people. If there's going to be a lot of new artists coming in, let's make sure they're doing it right. How about that? You know, instead of just scolding them about how they're doing it wrong. So yeah, I agree. Hey man, tattoo question here. How do you get so smooth with your gray wash? I mean, my friend, that's an extensive answer. It comes down to your hand speed, your machine, and you getting used to having the machine. Overall, it's the depth and the finesse that you have with your hand uh, and how much you're hanging your needle out. And it's all of that stuff harmonizing. And then you getting the muscle memory to be able to create smooth shades by having this finesse even depth as you're going back and forth or whatever technique you're using. And I would say that it takes time, it takes reps, but if you're smooth, if your shading is not smooth, you need to adjust something. And you keep adjusting until you get like, oh, okay, that looks kind of smooth. All right, what did I do to get that, that smooth? Oh, it's like, okay, if I, if I do this and I hold it like, oh, let me try to do that more, you know? I would say one tip I would say that a lot of people don't know about is a lot of people will use their mag and just go straight like this with their mag flat. And it's super beneficial if you were to curve your mag like this and go like this. Uh, really, the angle that you're putting it at is really closing the gaps between the needles. Because in your mag, your needles are spaced out like this. And if you just kind of go straight like this, it doesn't fill in the gaps. It'll kind of leave like these needle marks, right? But if you go at an angle like this and you hold your machine at a decent angle, you're, you're actually filling in those gaps. So you can get a fully saturated, uh, smooth gray with, at the right depth if you're holding it at the right angle, right depth, and with a nice finesse to it. And then as you get the muscle memory down and do it more and more, you can do it faster. You could fucking, you, you know, you've got all the tools in your bag so you could be more efficient and getting smooth grays won't be as hard to you anymore. Uh, but that's going to take some time, I would say. Joey, I'm not going to lie. That's hella funny because you're right. Is it, uh, For you guys that don't know, Joey said, bro, even streaming what y'all do for fun, like where you spend your money at, I feel like it's always fun watching tattoo guys outside of their element. 100% because what people don't realize is all these tattoo artists have their own personalities. Some of them are funny. Some of them are, you know, there's so much shit outside of tattooing that makes them them. And we only care about the tattoo part, right? But there's so much character there that it's just so funny to see how different people are. And I'm much more than a tattoo artist, guys, let me tell you. And I, I take pride in like, you know, I'm a tattoo artist, but I don't identify my whole identity to it. Like there's so much more to me, so much more depth. It'd be fun to share that with you guys because uh, it just makes it more interesting, I would say. Do you feel like getting consistent skin to work on help you master your technique or you feel like it doesn't matter the skin tone technique is all the same? I would say that you need experience in all different types of skin because at the end of the day, no matter what you do as a tattoo artist, a lot of your experience is going to come down to how well you're able to adjust for skin because it's always going to be a factor. You're never just going to have just pale skin or just soft Asian skin or Filipino skin or like this milky, really good, easy to saturate black skin. Uh, there's, there's no way you're ever going to have, you're always going to have to deal with the adjustments. So it's better for you to know how to adjust based on the skin type, the skin tone, the skin texture and still get the same effect. Because that's really where it's going to come down to. If you could only get good shading on pale skin or, or soft skin, then 
it's like it doesn't say much really because of course you can it's fucking butter you know but like if you can get smooth shading on some rough skin on or just consistently get a really good um a really good technique and look to your tattoos no matter the skin type the skin tone the skin color nothing it's uh that really speaks volumes to the experience you have as an artist. So I would really focus on it's okay to have different bad skin or what you would consider bad skin. Just learn how to adjust per skin and develop a good technique for each skin type, basically. But technique overall is all the same. There's just slight adjustments. That's all. No, nothing crazy. What helps you from burning out? This could be a long answer, but I'll keep it short. I found in my many years of tattooing that it's very easy for us to get tunnel vision in tattooing and this is all that matters because it's going to take me somewhere and the more the better I get the farther I'm going to get the more money I'm going to make the more uh the more cool shit I get to tattoo and all this shit and you really start to eliminate other things in your life because you're too focused just on tattooing. Now, you do have to have a certain level of focus to get anywhere and you have to be dedicated, right? But what I would say is Balance is a huge part of all of life in general, not just in tattooing, but um, just in life. And what we need to focus on is the things that make us feel good in the body, in the mind, and the spirit. Because at the end of the day, if you don't feel good, what's the point of even living your life that you're living, right? You have to feel warm inside. You have to feel your body. It has to feel stretched out. It has to feel like it's moving. You have to feel connected to your body. Your mind has to be sharp, but you're, it's not your master. It's your servant, you know? There's that old saying where um, the mind is a terrible master, but it's a great servant, right? Um, you don't want any of these things to be out of balance because you're going to have a bad quality of life experience no matter what you do. And a lot of this is connected to how creative you are, how able you are to do long sessions, how able you are to stay um, present with your family and your clients and all of this stuff. If you really want to dial that in and have a good quality of life and do good tattoos, you're going to have to take into account how you're really doing stuff for yourself. Like what are the things you're doing to really prep yourself to go out into the world and be the best version of you? And that all comes down to your mind, your body, and your spirit. And definitely do not lack on the spirit part. Because at the end of the day, bro, like uh, there's a lot of deeper parts of us that make us feel the way we feel on a day-to-day -day basis. And if you can hone in on those and really grasp them, understand them, and then do the things you need to do to really light up your life and really just, just feel the energy of life that's all around you at all times, I know I'm getting off from tattooing, but this all dials back to no matter what you're doing, you will have such a different perspective and experience of life than what you would consider the rat race or just this hustle mentality. And you'll get so much done. You'll, get, you'll feel so good about what you're doing because everything is aligned and everything feels good. So that's how I don't get burnt out is if I need time off from tattooing, I just won't tattoo. I'll go do other stuff that feeds me. And if I... If I want to teach more like I'm doing now, I'll do that more. If I want to exercise and stretch my body more because my back hurts, and my, I'll do it. I'll do the things I need to do to make myself feel good because at the end of the day, quality of life is everything. And we really need to hone in on that as artists because we get really tunnel vision and we let everything else go. And then you wake up one day and you just hate your life. And I, I've been there many times. And that's why I'm telling you this from experience and balance is going to be the key and opening your mind to all the different things that you could do for yourself um, to make yourself feel good you know Raphael said what's your uh, i think you meant opinion on the guys who work for you smoking bud while tattooing so i do have an opinion about this subtly i think that it is better to have a clear it's a better habit to have a clear head while you're doing this type of work i understand people are like oh i'm be i'm better um I'm more creative when I'm smoking or when I'm high or I'm able to focus in. At the end of the day, bro, when you're high, you are very susceptible to doing stupid shit. I'm not even going to lie. It doesn't matter who you are. You're very susceptible to forgetting something or whatever, right? Even if you're an experienced smoker. But 
I leave room for the guys to express the way they want to in their life, and I give them my opinions, or I give them some, a little nudge, and then it takes a while for people to integrate that type of stuff, because they have a way of being before they met me, and I'm not here to change anybody in a way that is forceful. I'm here to inspire change, and then they have to do that themselves. I can't do it for them, so I'm not going to scold them for it, but I would say that there is always a better way. There's always a there's always something about it that feels a little off, and I know they can feel it too. So I let them be, I let them do what they do, but if it ever got in the way of something or if it really made a, a, a mistake in something, I would definitely let them know, and it would probably be the time when I would be like, hey, you need to change this. And I'm not going to lie, if it, if it happens too much and I realize it and they're taking too many breaks, I'm, definitely, I'm on it, definitely. But it's definitely a balance between letting people be themselves, but also nudge them in the right direction, really. Yeah, I agree, bro. I, I think it's not, I don't think it's the optimal way. And, you know, optimal is not even the right word because at the end of the day, I just feel like it's just not right. But like I said, when you're in a leadership position and also someone that people look up to, especially when you're close to the people, there's a balance between letting them experience certain shit for themselves and figuring it out with your guidance. And when they figure it out in that way, it's much more potent. I could tell them like, hey, you cannot smoke. Like just completely flat out, do not ever smoke while you're tattooing. But a lot of them have been doing that in their process for so long and they're so used to it that it almost needs to like gradually let it go out. Let them realize why it's bad and like, I see what he's saying okay, this makes sense, and then they stop. And they've definitely stopped a lot. And I would say that if it ever got in the way of something, I would definitely let them know. It's just a balance between letting people be them while also giving them the proper guidance. But that's cool that you did that. I'm not going to lie. That's a, that's a step in the right direction, Raphael. I'm not even going to lie to you. Because for you to set that standard for your guys, it's really letting them know, like, listen, this is how we act. This is how we're supposed to be. And I want you guys to be on this same hype with me. So let's do it. And that's really good of you to do that. You know, I've been through many artists. It's not like I just had a couple artists and then that's it. Like I've been through a bunch of artists. And what I've found in my experience is each of these artists are individuals when they come to you. They have a way of doing things. They have a way of being. They have a, they're looking for guidance. They're looking for some sort of inspiration from you. But to do it in a way that doesn't cause resentment or feel like you're trying to change them too much or um, you don't allow them to express themselves, you have to inspire the change in them and leading by example and how it works for you and show them, show them the way and then they'll, they'll, they'll follow the way. When you shove someone down the way, it doesn't always work out. They might stumble and then they might just fall right back into their old habits and then also resent you on top of that. So, yeah, I, I get it. I, 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 trust me, I was like that in the beginning, too. I was very much harsh, like, like matter of fact and like this is the way it is and that's it. Um, and, it and it works to an extent. And you know what? It, it, it's definitely... You're just working with different personalities and you're going to, depending on how harsh you are, you could lose people and then they resent you for it. Or they, they don't really get the message that you're trying to send to them. And I'm not just talking about the weed thing. I'm talking about in a bunch of different ways. For them to really get what you're trying to get to them, they have to really feel like it's the right way to go. And to show them that is a different beast. You know, you have to like really live it, be it, embody it. And show them why this is the, the, the optimal way to do shit. And it's like, sometimes I would lead by example. Then I'd nudge them and I'd be like, you see that? You could do that. You could be that. You could easily do that. I believe in you to do this. I believe you're capable of doing this. I believe you're capable of making this change. And really, honestly, this comes down to the difference between like, Forcing someone to change because they're in your space versus a more human level. This is more of a this is more of a interaction between two humans that 
I maybe have figured, I have figured out a way and I'm like, I know that this is the optimal way. I know that this is the healthy way, the proper way, all this stuff, because I've proven it. And then to be able to show that to them and be able to let them feel it, then they're like, you know what? That's it. That's the way to go. I tried this way. I tried that way. But I see how it's working for you. I see how good you feel. I see how happy you are. I see all this stuff. I want to be like that. Not, not, and it's not all about like, oh, I want to be balling out like this dude. I want to be doing this. A lot of the times it comes down to how that person is acting on a day-to-day basis. Like how good do they feel? Like, damn, they, they look like they feel really good. And like they're doing all their shit. Their clients are happy. They're, they're smiling. They feel very genuine. It doesn't feel like a fake mask. It feels like they're really taking care of themselves and they're doing the right things. I want to be like that. That's where the true power comes from. That's where the true boss shit comes in because you really know how to lead these people in the right direction and not just shove them down the path you think they should go down just because they're in your space. So it just, with time and experience of owning a shop, bro, you, you might feel a different way of, about going about it. But I would say that it's always good to be stern and, and stick by what you believe in. So I'm not saying you're wrong with that at all. Yeah, uh, this guy said it pretty good. When people redirect me with love, I respect them as a leader and a professional. That's the difference, bro. It's like you're redirecting them with love. And I know love is such a charged word and people take it differently. But love is honestly like everyone, every human wants love. And to be honest, this is getting real deep because like you have to love yourself to be able to fully give love to someone else in that way, even a friend or a relationship. But if you lead with love, you're guiding people in the right direction in a different type of way, bro. It is a, such a powerful way that speaks to their human self, not the persona that they put out to the world. And a lot of people are, are operating with a mask or a persona or like, a, uh, like what they want people to see. And then they're holding in what they, the way they actually are, the way they actually feel, because they think that the social mask is more important than anything else. But what I'm trying to get at is there's a way to speak to their real, true self that they hide from everyone. And you change that part of them and you lead with love in that way. There's some change that you can make that that's where the true power lies, bro. I'm telling you right now. And whether that takes you a long time to figure that out or whatever, that's where it really is. I I, I was raised very in a harsh environment, super judgmental. I was getting beat. I was like, I had no guidance, no parenting, no dad. My mom, my, I had my mom, but uh, she was down and out. She had, I had no guidance, bro. Zero guidance. I was out in the street and basically the streets was my, my, my leader, my teacher. You know, I was, I didn't even go to high school, bro. I was in the streets, bro. I was going to jail. I was hitting licks and I was trying to be something I wasn't. But I think that because I went through all that, I tried once I made it out of there, I tried to figure out who the fuck am I really? Who, who am I with it when I take all that away? When I take all the shit that I thought that I was supposed to be, I took that away and I'm, what's left? And I start to uncover who am I really as, as a person, as a human, like authentically, not just like this made up character that I tried to make to survive in the world. And then once I started doing that, I started seeing it in other people. And I was like, I see what they're doing. They're creating a mask because they feel like they need that to survive in the world. But that's not really who they are. So I understand out of survival, you have to be more aggressive because that's how you were treated when you were younger. But once you heal some of that past and you start to understand why you even develop those things to survive in the first place, you realize that you don't need that anymore. You're at a place in your life where you get to decide who you want to be and you deciding that you want to become a more authentic version of who you really are, not what the world made you, but who you actually are. That's so much more powerful. You want to talk about boss shit and like doing all that. That's where it's so powerful, bro. And it takes a long time and it takes a lot of, it takes a very open mind to get to that point. But let me tell you, bro, like I wish that for you. I do. I do. For sure, I see you teaching such good tattooers, but what about teaching hustle? Some dudes just don't got it, the hunger. Look, whether someone wants it enough or not is going to come from them. Teaching hustle isn't, it, it's a, uh, 
it's kind of like a fake little inspiration thing. It's like, like you can do, it's like a fake motivational thing. It's like, you should hustle because you should, it's not the real way. You have to help people connect to why they're doing the thing in the first place. And if they could connect to the reason why they're actually trying to do this and what it means for their life and uh, the vehicle that it can create for them to get to the next level and like really connect to why are you doing this? And, and then telling them, if you're going to do this and you really want it, you're gonna, you want to do it the right way. Here's the right way to do it if you want it. If you don't want it that bad, you need to reevaluate why you're doing this. So let's go back to square one. Why are we doing this? All right, you know, I, wanna, I want a creative job. I want to I provide for my family. I want to create a life for myself that is um, worth living. All right, cool. Let's, let's go with that then. Let's go to the next step now. Like, we need to lock in. We need to get the reps in. We need to really get after it now. But this is different than hustle. This is connecting to the human part of them of why they're even doing anything in their life ever, right? Like, like if you don't want this enough, you're just lazy. If, if, if you know what's good for you and you just don't want to put up the, the work, there's other things you're lazy in in your life. This isn't the only thing. That's a lazy person. And you could tell them to hustle, hustle, hustle all you want, but it's just like short-lived inspiration that doesn't really last. So you really got to help them connect to the idea of where this vehicle can take them, not just in a, in a, in a, in a financial sense, but just how could, you could evolve as a person. And, and look, 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 what, look what this could do for your life. And it, it's, it's connecting to the why, bro. It's like, really, that's what it is. The hustle shit is, is kind of for the birds, to be honest. Uh, I'm really trying to hone in on how to get more of this good stuff to you guys and I'm trying to make it easy for myself to put out a lot of it quickly or not quickly but just consistently you know between the blogs and like the the valuable stuff like I said the the course is coming soon it's a big one we're going to drop a wait list soon if you join the wait list you will get a discount when it drops and I really want the good people the people that really want it to get it Um, so that's huge for me I'm super excited about that uh, love from Jamaica. Uh, th- thank you, bro. Um, you're the go, bro. Thank you, Ryan Angel. I'm gonna I'm gonna sign off here, guys. Uh, let's 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 stay centered. Let's stay connected. Let's stay excited about life, and let's stay excited about tattooing. Right? Let's let this be the vehicle that takes us to the next level, and takes us wherever we want to go. Because as soon as you get really good at something, the rest of your life changes forever. Um, let me tell you, like you get really good at something, the world opens up to you. You can do whatever you want after that. Let's get good at something first. Let's get good at this. Let's do it together. If you need help, I'm here to help. I'm not gatekeeping shit. Let's get there. So I appreciate you guys always. Uh, thank you for everyone who joined and asked questions. Uh, Raphael, I appreciate you, my boy. I appreciate everyone that, uh, asked a question. All the best questions that were asked here, I'm going to clip them and put them on Instagram and shit so other people can get value out of them as well. But until next time, it's another Ash Shine. I'll see you guys on the next live. Appreciate you.